Hey guys, this is Bright. Yeah, I'm gonna do a tutorial on shingles. So, well, what we're basically gonna use is the library back here that I've made together with a few others. Shag, a Skag, EU, and uh, Fugazi as well. And Draco as well, yeah. But what we're gonna do is create some shingles like these. As you see, there's wind, uh, a bit of work into it. Uh, I hope you have the basic understanding al already of, uh, of reactor work. And um, basically, it's about forcing uh, a voxel to look like a shingle like this and you can do that by defining the corners around the white corners around the brown voxel in the center here and, and um, yeah let's just get to it basically you're just gonna have to mess around a lot with it uh, to learn how this functions but it's as you see here um, well, let's start. Okay, the, what we're using from this library, it's the white voxels here. The gray voxels are just an indicator that indicates where the vo white voxel will uh, pull the center voxel to. So, basically, if we take a shape like this one, we have to envision where the where the gray voxel is pulled to. And it looks a lot like that one is pulling someone like something like this. Not exactly, but it's close. Let's just cut that like that. Yeah, as you see, it will uh, extend the corner of this voxel in the center like that. Copying it, turning it around, we can force it to pull it the exact same place on the other side. Um, yeah, let's just do a regular shingle to begin with, but what you do is when you found a starting point like this, what you do is hold down control and you can just move the cursor up, or the selection up. Then make a copy of uh, one of the other voxels up here, and then uh, go back. This is basically already a shingle, it's not a very advanced shingle, but uh, as you see, these are just individual uh, voxels, by making a space of air between them, they won't distort each other, but by placing them right next to each other, you can make them distort a bit. kind of stuff with this. But let's see. As you see the back side we'll we want it to be uh, more like a curve selection or what I call it. Uh, we need an angle on it. So what we do is have a look at the back side here. Let's see the other the other shingles I've already made. They pulled uh, out so they're wider on the back side than they are on the front and that will give give them the ability to you know, uh, go to 
together and look more natural. So what we need to do is, we took one from this row before, so now we're gonna just take one from a bit longer out here. Go to the back side. a good row. So what we do is we we'll just take one from higher up. And I think we took one. So here we go. That's good. Like that. Mirror and rotate. So shingle as you see here and it's already much better But to give it a more organic look, we'll, we'll just have to, instead of just mirroring and rotating each position, we'll have to take a position that is uh, close to the original one. So for instance, if we take this one, which came from here, we'll just take one that's close to it, just like that one up there. So already we have a bit of a more organic look to it. Let's just take one from the same row here. Come on, little fella. There you go. And let's just take one from the top here. with that. And as you see, it looks a lot better. It gives it a more random look to it. I just mirror it then rotate it to give it But again, side a bit as well as you see over here and it's just the same process of finding something that is close to the, the original pieces better
that's me fucking around. Anyways, an easy way to add a bit weight to it and uh, to what is it called, uh, you know, uh, filling out the gaps in the in the roof is just by adding a, a voxel on the back side few voxel like this. So the original voxel is here and we've just added voxels on the back side and beneath it. And then we paste the shingle back into it like that. Remember to paste without covering the air. So we get the uh, shingle This is a very basic tile. You know, we only use some positions from the front row of the library. But as you see here, I've had to use a lot of different positions. As you see, uh, this is where where the the voxel originates from. handle is on the back side and here it's on the front and that's that's how you have to do it uh, you know to to make this kind of curvature so the cur curved roof shingles are, are not as easy to make as just one shingle that is a, a you know the same the same curve or what's it called the same angle can be used like that to get different, uh, different curves. It's not called curves, it's incline, the incline, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit tired guys, sorry for the English, but I am doing my best. And uh, I'm not sure if I could have explained this better, I probably could, but it's all about getting used to using the library, you know? It's about understanding where are you right now, and which position, position are you in, compared to, yeah where you want the, the voxel to be stretched to so it's a lot of a lot about envisioning 
what do you want and when you start being able to do that you can do all sorts of stuff with this library it's, it's been really fun to play around with for me um, yeah you can use it to make all kinds of stuff like this give me a second yeah this is all just shapes so I've made by playing around with Unwilling victim of my new tutorial. But anyways, let's run away from him. I can't. I've just got one thing to show you. No, that's that was it. Yeah, it was. Say goodbye, Kaylin. Um, uh, yeah, let's just stop it here. Uh, I think that was it. Did I miss anything? Yeah, I'm just gonna stop here. Sorry for the lousy quality, or sorry for the, an unedited version. Uh, I hope you'll survive, and especially sorry for the crappy sound. Bye guys, see you around.